Kathleen Poston. I'm the division chief for movement disorders in the Department of Neurology, which means I'm a neurologist and then I did another two years um, of movement disorders uh, fellowship. Um, and the majority of the patients that we see are Parkinson's, but we see a lot of other movement disorders as well. And it's really my pleasure today to, uh, ex to explain to all of you and um, really distill down what I think is perceived as a very complex neurological exam to something that is more bite-sized that I hope you can take some pearls and kind of put it in your back pocket. And when you uh, encounter somebody who you might think has Parkinson's or one of your patients that you're seeing for some other reason who happens to have Parkinson's, you can sort of pull this out of your back pocket and, and try to apply some of these, some of these um, uh, particular skills. Five very basic skills for you to use. Number one is observation. Number two is bradykinesia. Number three is rigidity exam. Number four is the tremor exam. And number five is the gait exam. But I'm just gonna teach you kind of the high level. If you only know one thing to do in each one of those, this is what you do. That there's a lot of these non-specific symptoms that come up really early yeah. that are not tremor, that are not the classic motor symptoms. And so most patients go through this journey. And that's one reason why it's really important for non-neurologists to understand the exam because most patients go through um, several specialists that are mm. not neurologists, and sometimes that's years in the process. Um, there's also some data mm. from the Michael J. Fox Foundation from a couple of years ago that they t did a Medicare survey, um, and about 10% of people with a Parkinson's diagnosis are seen by movement disorders neurologists like me. Another 50% are seen by neurologists. The other 40% are primarily cared for by a non-neurologist, and that's because of lack of availability of neurologists, particularly in um, non-urban areas. And so there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people with Parkinson's disease who are primarily being either seen and diagnosed or are being um, cared for regularly by, by non-neurologists. And the reason observation is so important in somebody with the diagnosis of Parkinson's is that there are different movements that you see when somebody doesn't know that they are doing an exam versus when they are being prompted to do an exam. And so I'll see things during the history as I'm getting uh, information, as they're walking into the room that might not be seen on the more targeted exam. And so we really try to, uh, to observe as best we can our patients as we're talking to them. So with that, I'm going to introduce Dave, uh, who has been very kind to hey, join buddy. us here today. And I'm going to ask him to tell us a little bit about how he first uh, um, thought something was different sure. and how he came to the diagnosis. And I'm going to step a little out of the way so all of you can Alrighty. observe as he talks. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I didn't think this would be at all overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so my Parkinson's story started in, uh, in 2021. My wife, Beverly, and I were living down in uh, Manly, Australia. And uh, I woke up on a Friday morning in September, uh, and I felt lightheaded. And I didn't know what, it, you know, what was going on, but I didn't feel right. I just felt lightheaded. I felt a bit dizzy and a bit off. Uh, and that, it was a Friday, so we went through the weekend. And the, the, the coming, coming week, I made an appointment and went and saw my GP in, in, in Oz. And... Uh, uh, and she pretty quickly said, oh, uh, it's likely that you have uh, uh, paroxysmal positional vertigo. Did I get Close, yep, yep. Close Nine enough. Positional vertigo, yep, yep, yep. Uh, so she said, here's a series of exercises that has to do with crystals in your inner ear, blah, blah, blah. Got to reorient them, shake your head around, and you'll be fine. Right? So I, I followed the exercises. I did them faithfully. Right? Uh, I made an area in the living room floor where I could go slamming my head back and forth. And, uh, and it had really no effect. So a few weeks went by, and I went back and saw the doctor, and she prescribed a physical therapist uh, because perhaps I wasn't slamming my head around well enough. So we needed somebody, a specialist, to do that. So we did that, and I still did not have a tremor. Right? Um, and it took weeks to schedule the, the neurology exam, uh, and I didn't have that set up until March, Right uh, of uh, of 22 now, um, and um, 
uh, went to see the neurologist, and it was right around that time that I was developing a tremor in my right hand. Right? Um, I had also been having difficulty with penmanship and with taking notes during meetings. And I, my notes would look like a dot, right? And I would like write all the letters in the same spot. And, and, and trying to, just going, geez, what the hell, right? Uh, but trying to write, couldn't write. Uh, I finally did get to see a neurologist, and that visit was relatively brief. Her, her sort of examination was maybe 15, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and she was absolutely certain uh, I have Parkinson's disease. Yeah. So that, that was you know, from September to March uh, of, of 2022. Uh, was, from what I hear from other folks, relatively quickly yeah. diagnosed. Um, but at the time, it, it, it seemed a bit like, really? Yeah. You know, but what do you know? If you, if you haven't been through it, you don't know. Um, but um, I see now, especially, uh, you know, I'm involved in a, a support group down in San Jose. And so I, I meet a lot of patients, right, and a lot of caregivers. And we get the opportunity to, to, uh, to share our stories. Uh, and the diversity of stories is stunning. Right. So I want to comment on a couple of the ob observations. So are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Right-handed. Did you notice when he was gesturing, there was more animation in his left-sided gestures than his right-sided gestures? So I speak a lot with my hands. I'm Italian. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you, my right hand is a lot more active because I'm right-handed. So when you see an asymmetry in gesturing, particularly when the non-dominant hand has more gesturing, then that is actually a really key sign that there's an asymmetry going on. And classically, Parkinson's disease develops more prominently on one side of the body than the other. So this asymmetry, particularly when the non, and it's about 50-50 whether it's someone's dom, you know, whether it's right hand or left hand. So half the time, generally speaking, it'll be their dominant hand. But even with that, you'll notice this asymmetry. You obviously, I'm assuming, noticed the tremor as he was speaking, but even the spontaneous movements of his legs as his legs were swinging, there was more spontaneous swinging with the left leg than there was with the right leg. Um, and so those kinds of things are the observations that we notice. A lot of times patients will come in sitting on their hands yeah. to suppress their tennis. tremor. Yep, yep, yeah. that's a classic one. Yeah. Um, or they'll cross their, oh, double cross their legs to, to stop um, involuntary movements in one of their legs. So that's kind of always a telltale sign. I always ask patients to bring their hands out and rest them naturally on their lap as they're talking and you'll see some things. And so that's a big part of the observation that, um, that you just sort of get a hint of, of things that are going on.